Scott. Ted Rosen arrived yet? Not yet. Just speak to Margot Lissiona. He's out the back with Debbie. Any idea what's missing? No. Margot Liss is retired. He hasn't got a clue. But he says any good stuff she'll be in the safe. Get into it? No. Well, if there is anything dodgy here, that's where it will be. What are you looking for? Stone jewellery. Not junk like this. We got an anonymous call a couple of weeks back accusing Ted Rosen of fencing jewellery in this shop. I'd heard rumours, but not enough for a warrant. Got another call last night, and then this morning. Opportunity knocks. So how'd they get in? First floor toilet window at the back. The bars were rusty, easy to pull out. What, not alarmed? No, nope. it's the only one that isn't, and it's the only one they tried. Lucky. Don't think so. There was a ladder in the yard as well. Through here. Mr. Mark Ollis, I'm Detective Sergeant Daly, Sunhill. This is Detective Constable Scase. Such efficiency. We'll just take another look out the back, Mr. Margolis. Must have been a nasty surprise for you. My age misfortune is never a surprise. I understand you're retired now. Do you often open the shop? Now and then. My daughter and her husband run the show now, but they live out in Essex. When the traffic's bad, they call me from their car. And that happened today? My daughter, Val, she phoned around eight. Do you mind if we just take a look in the desk? Made a right old mess of this, haven't they? I bought that desk when I first opened this shop, in 1959. 1959? Things are a bit different then, I bet. Debbie, could you just get me a rod? Now, you haven't handled anything in this desk since the break-in, have you, Mr Margolis? I know about fingerprints, Sergeant. I haven't touched anything. Splendid. Give me that print out, Rod. Victorian brooch, sapphire and diamond engagement ring, antique gold engraved pocket watch. Well, well, well. What have you found, sir? Remember the burglary in Regis Square, 19th. Some old woman ended up in St Hughes. Ida Barter, aged 87. When the scrotes couldn't find her valuables, they dragged her out of bed and knocked seven bells out of her. I've just found some of Ida's jewellery in that desk in the back room. Okay, Debbie. Thanks a lot. We'll take it from here. Sarge. Sarge. This is all too handy. They knew exactly how to get in, didn't they? Sarge, Mr. and Mrs. Rosen. Thanks, Steve. I hope you get a result. Where's my father? He's in the back room, Mrs. Rosen. He's fine. I'm Detective Sergeant Dave. Dad. Dad. Mr. Rosen, I'm Detective Sergeant Daly, son ill. The other officer is Detective Constable Scase. What a mess. Yeah, I'm afraid so. I'd rather you didn't touch anything else. We've got a scene examiner coming down. When I was examining the damage done in the break in Mr. Rosen, I found something which, let's say, requires an explanation. All right, Mr. Rosen, have you seen any of these items before? Yes, I have. Where'd you get them? I bought them. Lovely pieces, Ted. How much did you get? Please, no touch. Ted, what's going on? Mrs. Rosen, have you seen these items before? No, never. Mr. Margolis? No. Sergeant, what is all this about? We believe these items were stolen in a particularly vicious burglary. Oh. Don't worry, Dad. I'm sure it's a stupid mistake. Mr. Rosen, can you tell us who you bought them from? <laughs> some woman, I, I think it was some... Sergeant, we're the victims here. You're supposed to be investigating our break-in. That's what we were doing, Mrs. Rosen, when we found these. So now we've got two crimes to investigate. Funny old world, isn't it? You got the records for this transaction? Oh, come on, Sergeant, look at the place. OK, when you've tied it up. Right. Now can you open the safe? What? We want to look in the safe. No, this has gone far enough. Mr. Rosen, either you open it voluntarily or we arrest you for handling stolen goods. Arrest me, then. Ted. No, Val, it's a disgrace. Look, I buy stuff every day. What, you want me to ask if it's nicked? Nice bracelet, madam. By the way, where did you steal it? Val. Val! What the hell are you doing? Can't have them arresting you, Ted. There, help yourselves. We've got nothing to hide.
Well, it looks like a lot of dodgy stuff in there. Well, let's get it verified. Mr. and Mrs. Rosen, we're taking certain items down to Sunhill for the purpose of identification. I'm also arresting you both on suspicion of handling stolen goods. Okay. You sign there, please. This way, Mrs. Rosen. Right, can you take a seat? Right, first of all, we need to identify the jewellery and then we'll interview you one at a time. I want to reassure you that this won't affect our investigation into the break-in at your shop. You can be in two places at once, can you? Well, there's not a lot we can do until the scene examiner's been there. But it would be helpful if you could think of anyone who might have inside knowledge of the shop. B what do you mean? Well, someone who might have worked there. Either behind the counter or a tradesman that might have come in. Somebody who had the run of the shop. Got to know the routines. No. There's been no one like that. No. No. I can recognise quality. If I'd seen any of these, I'd remember. So, who runs the shop? Me and Ted. You're in there every day? Me, no. I've got a home to run as well. Ted only has the shop. But you're in most days with Ted? I suppose so. The desk where we found this stuff. Who uses that? Ted. For his paperwork. And who shuts up shop? Ted does. So Ted locks up, does the take-ins and uh, puts the more valuable jewellery in the safe? Yes. And your father owns a shop, but he's retired, right? That's right. So basically, it's all down to Ted? Yes. So how long have you run the shop, Ted? Since my father-in-law retired. Twelve years. And you've worked there? From just after I married Val. So, 22 years. Long time. Half my life. Rod? Oh, I'm now showing the suspect. Exhibit RS1. Recognise this? It's a watch. Well, come on, you're a jeweller. Could you be more specific? It's a Victorian gentleman's dress watch with an engraved case, 22 karat gold. Okay, but you want the full antiques roadshow routine. Well, I'm now showing the suspect exhibit RS2, an amethyst brooch. Where was this? With a watch, wrapped up in a cloth in my desk, along with all the other stuff you've got there, the locket, the diamond ring, the gold bracelet. Exhibits RS3, 4 and 5. Yeah, those. So why wasn't it locked away in the safe, Teddy? I don't know, I, I must have forgot. You told us earlier that you bought this watch from a woman who came into the shop. That's right. Do you know her name? I've never seen her before. Can you describe her? Look, I'm not very good at remembering. Well, was she young or was she old? She was, what, I don't know, early 60s perhaps. And how much did you pay her for it? I, I can't remember offhand. It was sometimes... Oh, come on, Ted, it's a rare antique watch. Yeah? Yes. Well, how much did you pay her? I don't believe you can't remember. I gave the woman uh, 50 quid. I'll tell you what, we should drop the handling charge and do it for daylight robbery. Fifty quid. That's just for the watch, of course. Of course. <laughs> How about the other items? Did you buy them from the same woman? Yes. You, you, you bought them all separately. You didn't do a deal and get them all in one job lot. I think, I think. I made her an offer, but she wanted a price for each of them, so I treated stop, each other. Stop, please, separate. stop. I've met some liars in my time, Ted. But you take the biscuit. These items were stolen from an 87-year-old woman who was beaten so badly she ended up in intensive care. In the last two months, the men who stole these have been responsible for at least ten other burglaries. There was one two nights ago, an 84-year-old woman threatened with a knife. In six of those burglaries, actual violence was used. We want to catch those men, Ted, and we think you can help us. No. I can't. Right. Start again. Look, um... I think I need to speak to my solicitor. Have you let them go yet? We're just waiting for Tad's solicitor to arrive. Then we'll be asking some more questions. That sounds ominous. You don't always leave these ladders out here, do you? I hardly ever come out. Last I saw, it was locked inside. 
you talked to anybody recently about the shop, about security? I'm old, Sergeant, not daft. Why are you asking all this anyway? It's just that we think that whoever broke in might have had inside knowledge about the shop, with it not being an ex-employee or a tradesman. Diane Wire. Come again? Diane Wire? Didn't Val mention her? No. Who is she? Well, Diane Wire worked in the shop for well over a year. They took her on when... Val got very down in the mouth for a while, couldn't drag herself out of bed in the mornings. Ted indulged her, of course, said she was going through a midlife crisis. So when Val was unwell, Ted hired Diane Wire to help out? Stuck up little tight. I tell you, I was glad when she went. And when Val came back, they let her go? Val came back, found Wire was fiddling the books. Fired her like that. But I thought Ted did the books. Didn't he spot it? <laughs> That's Ted for you, too trusting. Besides, even if he'd suspected, he'd never have the guts to face her. Hates rows. Was there a row? Not off. Even I heard it from up there. Yelling, shouting and carrying on. When was this? A few weeks ago. So why didn't the Rosens tell us about this thing? I've been wondering the same thing myself, Rod. I think Ted's been set up. What do you mean he isn't fencing? Oh, he's fencing. Maybe even Val too, and Wyatt knew about it. Apparently she was furious when they gave her the elbow. And that's about the same time we got that first call fingering Ted. I think the wire trying to drop Ted in it, yeah? But nothing happened. So last night she breaks into the shop, makes a bit of a mess, doesn't steal anything, but leaves a package exactly where she knows we'll find it. Then she calls us again just to make sure. The more I think about it, the more it all fits. Diane Wire? Yeah. Detective Sergeant Daly, Sun Hill. This is Detective Constable Scase. Can we come in? What's it about? Margolis Jewelers. I believe you were dismissed from there recently. That's right. For dishonesty. <laughs> I suppose it was Val Rosen told you that. She did, didn't she? And I was fired for this. For being pregnant? Mm, half right. For being pregnant with Ted Rosen's kid. See, I was pregnant, of course, but she had no idea it was Ted's. She didn't think he was capable of it. <laughs> well, help yourself. So how did she find out? I told her. Well, Ted was going to for about five months. But that's Ted. It's confrontation. So, in the end, I did it. Never I forget the look on that woman's face. Well, you can imagine what she called me. Actually given up for the baby. She said I only took the job to get my claws into Ted. Did you? <laughs> Come on. He's about 20 years older than me and he wears cardigans. No, neither of us expected it or wanted it. Not at first. Just sort of crept up on us. Look, I love Ted. He loves me, he's, he's going to leave his wife and he's going to move in here before the baby comes and then later on he's going to get divorced and we'll get married. So why hasn't he moved in already then? Well, when he leaves the he's going to have to leave the shop too, isn't he? Obviously. He said he won't do that until he's got enough money together. He's a responsible man, Ted. He's a good man. So how does he plan to raise this money? I don't know. He hasn't said. I can't help feeling sorry for Ted. What? Come on, he's trading in his clapped out old escort for a brand new GTI. Unfortunately, it's got a baby seat built in as well. You're a right bleeding heart, aren't you, Rod? Anyway, we know why it's fencing now, don't we? DS Daly. Joey, what have you got? Yes. Okay, we'll be there. So, how's it going, Joey? There's still a few areas to dust. Don't expect useful prints, though. They made a mess, but they didn't really do much damage. They? Figure of speech. Now, I've had a good look out the back. I pay particular attention to that lavatory window. In my view, Sergeant Daly, there was no break-in. Come again? Well, someone climbed that ladder and forced open that window, but those bars were pushed out from the inside. You sure? Absolutely. 
If you ask me, someone tried pulling out the bars from the outside, but it was too tricky. So they gave up, came inside and did it the easy way. How did they get in there? Well, through the back door, I suppose. Same way they went out. Ted wants to screw some little tart half his age. Don't see it's any of your business. Come on, Val. Ted's affair with Diane Wire's at the root of all this. We thought we were looking at two separate cases, but we're not, are we? Ted is fencing jewellery to move in with Diane Wire, isn't he? You wanted us to catch him. Now we have. We know you faked the break-in, Val, in order to shaft Ted. And it's worked. Ted is well and truly shafted. Last night, at the shop, Ted told me he was moving in with her. I mean, I knew it, but I'd never heard him say it before. We argued while well, I shouted and threw stuff. Ted just stood there and watched. I thought he was going to start tidying up, but he didn't. He walked out. <laughs> After I stopped crying, I looked around. I'd made a real mess. I thought, if I can't have him, I'll make sure she can't either. Right, let's just be clear about this. Are you telling us that your husband has been dealing in stolen jewellery? Could you say it for the tape, please? Yes. He's always so infuriatingly responsible. He'd never just walk out and move in with her. He has to have it all planned. So how long has Ted been fencing? I found out first about two months ago. And did you do anything then? No. Because I didn't really believe it. Ted's always so honest, he doesn't even try and fiddle the vat. He'd never have thought of this himself. She put him up to it. She put him in touch with whoever's supplying the stuff, I guarantee it. Do you know who's supplying the stolen jewellery? No. Come on, he must have some idea. If I knew, I'd tell you. Well, tell us this, Val. When you found out that Diane Wire was pregnant, why didn't you leave Ted? Wouldn't that have been easier? I couldn't leave him, Sergeant Daly. I still love him. Right, Ted, I'm going to play you a tape. I want you to listen to it. I don't want you to reply. You understand? Right, let's just be clear about this. Are you telling us that your husband has been dealing in stolen jewellery? Could you say it for the tape, please? Yes. He's always so infuriatingly responsible. He'd never just walk out and move in with her. He has to have it all planned. Ted. Ted. I want you to understand a few things so that you can come to the right decision. You're about to become a father again, start a new life. I don't suppose you want to spend the first few years of that in prison. Sergeant, that's not really... I think you're basically a decent man who's done something incredibly stupid. The people who stole the jewellery are vicious, Ted, and they've got to be stopped. Give us some names, Ted. <sighs> I don't know any names. I, I never really saw them. Don't insult our intelligence. Give us some names. I can't. I just... I can't! I need to have a word with my client. Yes, Mr Sweeney. I think you do. That Sweeney's told Ted he can get him off. I think Sweeney was as baffled as us. Sarge, are you still after information on Diane Wire? Yeah, what have you got? Well, nothing on her, Sarge, but I think she's got a brother. What? Mm, Lee Wire, 19. Convictions for minor drug offences and threatening behaviour. But he's been arrested for robbery. I'm surprised we haven't met him. You sure he's her brother? I asked around, I'm pretty certain. Thanks. You and Val have got children, haven't you? So what? How many? Two. What are their names? Sarah and Robert. Do Sarah and Robert know about the problems you and Val have been having lately? Well, that's a relief. Do you love your kids, Ted? Mr Sweeney. Come on, Ted, it's an easy question. I love my kids. Happy now, Sergeant Daly. And what about Val? You love Val? Mr Sweeney. Sergeant Daly, this has got nothing to do with the allegations against my client. Well, tell us something else then, Val. When you found out that Diane Wire was pregnant, why didn't you leave, Ted? Wouldn't that have been easier? I couldn't leave him, Sergeant Daly. I still love him. 
Who first had the idea that fencing would be a good way to make money? Was it you or Diane? I'm not answering that. Maybe you've never been in trouble before. You've not even had a speeding ticket. So who turned you into a criminal? I know what you're trying to do. We're trying to help you, Ted. Show you where your loyalties really lie. Oh, please, charge me and put me back in a cell. Oh, we will, Ted. But first, tell us about Lee Wire. See, there's two possibilities. Either Lee was already carrying out the burglaries and his sister decided to help him out, or he started breaking into old people's homes and beating them up because you and Diane offered him an easy way of selling the gear. Which one was it? There's a third one as well, sir. Hmm? Lee was stealing on demand, you were telling him exactly what to get and even where to get it. No. No! Hang on! So what was Diane putting in the orders? I mean, she worked in the shop. Wait a minute! Yes, Mr. Sweeney? This is the first I've heard about Lee Wire. It's not our job to tell you about your client's future brother-in-law, is it? What did you say? Uh, don't you intend to marry Diane? We've never talked about it. Oh. Well, that's not the impression she gave us. She's got it all planned out for you, mate. Divorce from Val. Remarriage, and it wouldn't surprise me if she's booked that honeymoon already. <laughs> I'm sorry, we didn't realise you hadn't been consulted. You've got to ask yourself some painful questions, Ted. Do you want to share your life with someone who's incited you to commit such a serious crime? If Diane really cared about you deep down, do you think she'd have done this to you? And the big question, Ted, are you prepared to go to prison and watch Lee Wire get away with this? Hmm? Daly from Beach. Lee Wire's approaching. He's got someone else with him, and I see one male about the same age. Message received. Does Wire ever bring a mate? Yeah, sometimes. So, it's them. Don't forget, leave the door on the latch. Yeah. Sergeant Daly. Yeah. For now. <laughs> <laughs> 